Director Chopra, good to see you. Congratulations on your appointment. Great to see you again. And I look forward to working with you during your tenure uh, to promote consumer protection, not from a heavy-handed central planning approach, but instead, as you describe, a competitive marketplace where consumers uh, retain access to choices. And I was encouraged to hear you say uh, that you want to restore relationship banking. That was really, really a, a positive comment in your prepared testimony. Uh, in the way I think of it. And in fact, I think you use the words cut through red tape. And I'm going to hold you to that uh, because I believe relationship banking and relationship lending can't happen when lenders are deterred by a regulation through enforcement approach. Uh, so first question, do you believe that regulated entities should know the rules of the road in advance of any supervision or enforcement action? Yes, the laws that you have passed um, we should make sure that, do our best so that everyone knows what they are. I believe that we work best when laws are clear, easy to follow, easy to uh, enforce. Right, and I think that will facilitate that relationship style of lending. Let's talk about UDAP and um, your predecessor, act Acting Director uh, Weegio's rescission of the Kraninger uh, policy statement from 2020. And, and I appreciated what you said about durability and a durable abusive jurisprudence, but you also, in an answer to my colleague's question, talked about how the Bureau could provide some durability through, uh, through um, uh, in, in interpreting or applying uh, the abusiveness standard. And, he, and here's where I, I think where your, your immediate predecessor went wrong on rescinding, rescinding the guidance, because I, I don't believe rescinding uh, the Bureau's guidance promoted durability. I think it was the opposite. It created a chaotic discontinuity. Uh, and unpredictability. And, and, and I think um, um, arguably it was arbitrary and capricious to just upend abruptly um, a, a, a guidance offered by uh, Director Kraninger. So my question to you is, given the fact that Acting Director Weggio did not, in his rescission, did not offer an alternative interpretation of abusive, what in your mind is the, the, in the correct definition of abusive? So. Uh, many questions there. I'll try my best and t tell me if I don't. So with respect to abusive, Congress has laid out what the definition is in the multi-prong approach. So that exists, that's the law, and that is enforceable not just by the CFPB, the Prudential Banking Regulators, but also state attorneys general. Right, but Kraninger defined it. The problem, market participants didn't have clarity on what the statutory language actually meant, and that's why there was this dual pleading position in there. And so let's get a little so bit more. Congressman, can I just say More this, specific. On, on this, on this uh, that statement was not binding on, this, on the state attorneys general. It was not binding on the state regulators. It was not binding on the other. So, so let's get to that durability piece. So, yeah, so the way, the way in which, I think the way you build jurisprudence, there's many, many ways you do that. But particularly, you raise the issue of dual pleading. Right. When an when agency finds a violation of law and doesn't plead it, that's actually abrogating what Congress directed, and it's also bad for the development. Okay, so the what's law. the difference in your mind between abusive and unfair? So unfairness and abusive are two different frameworks. Unfairness requires an analysis of substantial injury. It requires an analysis of avoidability. And it also requires okay. an analysis of countervailing benefits to consumers and competition. In, in the interest of time, because we only have five minutes, I would have also asked you what's the difference between a, a, abusive and deceptive. But the point here is that in the Kraninger policy statement, uh, she specifically said that the Bureau would avoid challenging conduct of abusive where the alleged violation relied on all or nearly the same facts as an unfairness or decept deception violation. This is exactly what you're saying. You're making distinctions between the two. Kraninger was clarifying that why is the rescission, uh, the acting, acting director, Weegio's uh, rescission, in any way clarifying the situation? So I think sir, the rescission is undermining durability here. I totally disagree respectfully okay. with you. When we, when we don't plead those, courts cannot analyze that. They cannot issue opinions to determine whether, whether the, the conduct at hand violates. I'm running out so of time. Let's I work together on durability. Eager. 
I'm very eager to create a durable uh, Running out of time, yeah. let's work together on that. On civil investigative demands, are you open to guardrails on the factual predicates to initiate a CID and other parameters? A lot of uh, uh, regulated parties feel that this is a fishing expedition. I want to know how your agency and your leadership intends to, to put guardrails on, on CID so it's not a fishing expedition. I'm, I'm happy to review the existing policies on the issuance of civil investigative demand. While I was commissioner, I closely reviewed them and often, um, you know, asked that changes be made to them. So I, I'll look at that. I'll, I take that feedback. Seriously. Look forward to working with you. Okay. Thanks. Yield back. The gentleman.